G'day viewers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel. It's time to have a tough talk about tough times as we explore some articles from around the world, primarily focusing on the Australian economy, global markets as well, and where we'll move forward in this new era of a pandemic that is sweeping the world. From Monday at midday, Australia will become a vastly different place to live as pubs, clubs, restaurants, cinemas and indoor sporting venues across the country shut down indefinitely. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has announced a new raft of unprecedented restrictions on non-essential gatherings in a bid to slow down the rapid spread of CV. More liberal measures rolled out last week fell on deaf ears with, Australia's, with Australians continuing to cram into venues across the country this weekend. We don't know how and we don't now have any confidence that people would refrain from gathering in those ways in those pubs, clubs and nightclubs, Mr Morrison said at a press conference in Canberra. We have no confidence that will be followed. So unfortunately, because guidelines can't be followed, then for public health reasons, we now need to take further action which shuts those gatherings down. As a result, stage one of tough new restrictions will be implemented on Monday, March 23 at noon, covering a wide range of venues that will see them shut down and they could stay shut down for up to six months. Now this was triggered by a group of, shall we say, special people who gathered somewhere in Adelaide and in one way standing up to the restrictions that were put up to, uh, on them or suggested to them by saying, no, we are going to gather irrespective of what you say, regardless of what you do, we're going to congregate and hang out in big groups. Well, that seems to have triggered a response from the government uh, for better or worse, more than likely for, uh, for better, to say, no, this is a public health issue. We need to do the, what is right and we need to put down our foot and say no more gatherings. And the only way we can do that is by shutting down many of these public venues. The article from news.com.au reads on, all pubs, registered and licensed clubs and licensed premises inside hotels and pubs will close, Mr Morrison said. In those venues, accommodation facilities can continue to operate as normal, but with good hygiene and social distancing measures in place. Entertainment ve venues such as theatres, cinemas, casinos and nightclubs will also shut their doors to patrons. Restaurants and cafes will be restricted to providing takeaway food only, with dining in now forbidden from Monday. Home deliveries, takeaway, all of these things will continue, as I know many of these catering businesses are already adjusting their business models in anticipation of things they believed would potentially take place, Mr Morrison said. Takeaway alcohol businesses will still be able to continue operating. Um, that is important in the sense that people are under a lot of stress and if you look in uh, economic terms when uh, certain industries uh, survive and thrive during recession and economic downturn, uh, what is interesting is uh, I remember when I was doing my economics degree many years ago, the two industries that you would usually thrive was actually prostitution and alcohol. Uh, and that's because people were stressed, so they needed a, an out for their stress, and that stress would be uh, alcohol or prostitution. And for some on the other side of prostitution, whichever side that may be, uh, they were making money for from prostitution. So some people were getting relief from it and some people were making money from it. But of course with a virus, everyone is staying from it. So the alcohol industry may be the only one that seems to survive. But of course takeaways are the only way that you can buy beer now that these lockout rules are in place. So before I read on to the economic side of this, let's just get a quick snapshot of how many cases there are out in the world. We can see global cases of this uh, disease, this pandemic, uh, 315,968 global cases. Of that, 13,585 are dead. And also of the 315,000, nearly 316,000, 94,155 have recovered. The historic order could uh, be just a taste of things to come with Prime Minister saying authorities would consider further restrictions if necessary. So we could see more restrictions put down if people don't abide by this and if we have more uh, civil disobedience against these rules, against these health uh, steps that people are taking and the government is taking, uh, we'll enter into phase two and that phase two 
uh, I'll just call it what it is, um, you'd see martial law uh, be imposed, and with martial law imposed, uh, you would have a lot more uh, militaristic type presence moving forward to make sure that people are abiding by the rules around them. Uh, another snapshot of the highest cases outside of China. So China is the highest case count with 81,397 infected, and that's what we know of. Italy next at 53,500. Spain next with 28,500. The United States next with nearly 27,000 affected. Germany coming in at nearly 24,000. Iran, 21,000. France, 14,500. South Korea, nearly 9,000. Switzerland, just over 7,000. The United Kingdom, 5,000. And the Netherlands, 4,216. Again, that's a total of 315,000 as more countries go down the list. In case you're wondering about the good people in Australia, we have 1,190 reported cases in Australia going around the state. Western Australia, 52. Northern Territory, 2. Queensland, 259. Uh, South Australia, 100. Uh, New South Wales, 533. The ACT, 4. Uh, Victoria, 229, and down in Tasmania, 11 cases reporting there. And we are up to 75 days, 20 hours and 13 minutes since the uh, virus was first discovered. So this is day 75, and if you look at how things are charted, uh, these numbers are going to skyrocket and skyrocket very, very quickly indeed. So let's go over to how, in economic terms, the government will pull certain levers to stimulate the economy. So you've got two sides of this. Of course, the, the immediate side is uh, people's health and that's mental and physical. People are very scared about what's happening and people react in very different ways when they are scared. And there is a, a saying that most people are only nine days away from uh, rioting or mass civil disobedience. Nine meals being that uh, you go three days in, when you're hungry. If there's no food for three days, people will revert to desperate measures. And those desperate measures could result in violence and other forms of civil disobedience, basically so they can eat because they're scared. And when you're scared and hungry, you take the law into your own hands. And when you're in the martial law or a lawless land, things change completely. The first world that we live in at the moment uh, is changing most certainly for the next few months, possibly forever. Now, this is from uh, the ABC News. And I've mentioned in many of my videos about some of the economic levers that governments will pull to stimulate or slow down an economy. And one way or another, they pull these levers to get an economy to do something that they want it to do. Uh, yes, in some instances, you do want to slow down an economy. And of, of course, in this instance, you don't want to slow it down, you want to speed it up. Uh, and then when we talk about speeding it up, we would like to see it just get back to normal. Uh, as everything is shutting down uh, by law, by health recommendations and by fear money stops and when money stops uh, people can't buy stuff and when people can't buy stuff they get hungry and when they get hungry it leads to civil disobedience so you have this massive flow-on effect and of course people are dying so the two sides to it of this whole collapse is the medical and psychological side and the other side to it of course is the economic side the economic side of everything stopping and of course they are inherently intertwined they are intertwined because with no money there's no food and with no health there's no way of earning money so it is this constant uh, symbiotic relationship of having health a healthy mind healthy body and a healthy ability to operate to create a healthy wallet a healthy bank account and to keep life moving if you take anything out of this very fine balance of being able to earn money or spend money even if you have the money if you can't spend it if everything's shut down uh, things fall out of balance and, ba and bad things happen so to ease this situation of an economic slump billions of dollars are being pumped into the coronavirus hit economy in a bid to stave off recession, Scott Morrison announces. This again from the good people at ABC News. The federal government has announced a $17.6 billion economic stimulus package in a bid to keep Australians in jobs as the economy takes a hit from the spread of CV. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the package would provide an immediate stimulus to the economy amid fears Australia could slip into a recession. The package includes tax-free rel tax relief for small businesses, one-off cash payments for welfare recipients, and money to keep 
apprentices in work. More than 6 million welfare recipients, including pensioners, carers, veterans, families, young people and job seekers, will get a one-off cash payment of $750 from March 31. The biggest beneficiaries of that will be pensioners, Mr Morrison said. They comprise around half of those who receive those payments, but they also will be extended to those in, those in family tax benefits, which obviously goes to those, earning ha- those in earning households. The one-off payments will cost the government $4.8 billion, and Mr Morrison said he believed recipients would have the common sense to spend that money in ways which would benefit the economy. Um, I've always said there's no such thing as common sense. There's only a sense that is common to you and I, and those are those five senses of touch, taste, smell, sound, and what was the one I'm missing? Comments below. This will stimulate you to make comments. But the common sense of what to do with your money is not common at all. So when people get this money, I remember during the GFC, we got that nearly $1,000 bonus. Many people, instead of reducing debt, went out and bought a TV. And if we are in a welfare state, of course, we need to help these people. But there are some people who will take the $750 and go shopping as shops reduce the price of everything they're selling to stimulate people to go out and spend money. So, of course, instead of spending this money on food, water and necessities, they'll be spending money on, believe it or not, not everyone, but there will be certainly a portion of people who do this that spend money on shoes, handbags, toys, lollies, electronics and alcohol. Um, It is a sad reality that some people are better with money than others and some people when they've given free money for whatever reason they don't do the right thing with it. I'm not saying we shouldn't put this $750 into the economy into those who need it. Uh, It will certainly help many people who do the right thing with their money but for many who don't do the right thing with their money um, it'll just lead to another handout and of course all of this leads to the dilution of everyone's money. If you're pouring very quickly billions of dollars, uh, in this instance a $17.6 billion economic stimulus package poured into the economy very quickly, we know that there's going to be flow on effects from that. And the flow on effects from that is a dilution of everyone's money, essentially inflation. The article reads on, the one-off payments will cost the government $4.8 billion and he said the recipients would have the common sense to spend the money, as we were recapping there. It's not for us to tell the Aussies how to spend their money, uh, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg added. But what we do know from experience is that they will spend that money and that money will encourage economic activity. And the more economic activity that we see through the June quarter in particular will be important. Mr. Morrison also said casual workers who contracted COVID-19 or had to isolate themselves would be eligible for a new start welfare payment while out of work. The typical wait time to access the payment will be waived but people will face an asset test before receiving the money. Now, the problem with an asset test in an emergency time like this is that you need an army of people to exercise that asset test. And when you have an army of people exercising that asset test, if they get infected, then those those tests get delayed. And these people who genuinely need the money to buy food go into that danger period of going for nine meals without any food. Nine meal periods missed. Nine occasions where they don't eat where they normally would and that pushes us into the danger zone. So, of course, we don't want to just give away money, but at the same time, once you start asset testing it in a time of crisis, you create huge risk of what the flow on effects will be. And of course, when you actually start weighing up how much it costs to do an asset test, as opposed to just pushing the money into the economy, you start finding that you're spending twice as much in the test itself than actually just pushing that money into the economy. But here's the thing. Unlike the GFC when shops were open and shops were trying to sell goods and services, shops are now closed. Shopping centres are closed and even if I give you certain money, I can't allow you to go out into the economy because there's bans on you doing that. So the only way you can buy is online. And as I've mentioned in my last video, my biggest fear is once they start shutting down the postal service. We've already seen that the borders are going to be shut down, not just international borders, but domestic borders. And once they start shutting down a postal service and shops are shut and people can't leave their homes, well, that's when people start to die of starvation or take the law into their own hands and start rioting on the streets. It is a uh, very 
inbuilt part of humans that they will fight for their survival. Billions of, ever, billions of years of evolution have ensured people who fight to survive typically do survive or die in the fight to do so, but those who do nothing uh, are almost guaranteed to have a, an adverse outcome. Uh, I'm hoping it will never get to this stage, but the reality is when people get hungry, people take the law into their own hands. They take matters into their own hands and move out to get food to feed themselves and feed their family, particularly when children are involved. People will die for their children. That is how, how we've survived for many years and uh, modern times make that no different. But I'll read on before I digress too much from the article. The government will spend $11 billion before the end of this financial year, with the remainder to be injected into the economy before July 2021. The government wants its stimulus to be temporary and offer an immediate boost to the economy rather than making permanent changes to the budget. So here's the problem with pushing all this money into the economy. Of course we have to do something. But by giving tax breaks to businesses, which we're about to go into, and tax incentives to businesses, you're really shifting the risk onto them. So you're saying, well, there's only so much we can and want to do as a government. So businesses, go out there and pay your people and feed the economy. Well, again, the issue is businesses are forced to, being sh to be shut. So if you've just shut down a pub, a club, a restaurant, a hotel, partly or entirely, casinos and so forth, maybe it's not so bad shutting down the casinos, particularly in times like this, but in all those other industries, if you're a business operator and the government has just shut you down, but then the government says, well, here's a $100,000 loan or a tax break so you can keep making the payments, well, that doesn't help you at all because you're not generating any income because you're not allowed to operate by law. So we can see the huge gaps in what we're about to read here. The business cash payments and tax incentives, it reads on. Nearly 700,000 small and medium businesses will receive cash payments of between $2,000 and $25,000 to help pay wages or hire extra staff. The measure is the largest part of the package and is estimated to cost $6.7 billion. The stimulus package also includes $1.3 billion in support payments to keep apprentices in their jobs amid fears the spread of the coronavirus could have a crippling effect on employment. On Wednesday, the government allocated $2.4 billion for, health, for a health package, including 100 pop-up CV fever clinics and a new Medicare item to deliver health advice remotely. Medium and big business will ensure will be encouraged to spend on equipment and other investments through the extension of the instant asset what asset write off my apologies and in, the instant asset write off which means they can claim a tax break for what they spend. So again, they they want you to spend money and they'll give you a tax break for it. But this goes back to uh, again many videos I've spoken about. You can't claim a tax benefit. On money that you haven't made. So a tax benefit is offsetting a tax that you may not have paid because you're not making any profits. So if you're not making any profits, you're not paying any tax. You're not paying any tax. If you make zero profit, you pay zero tax. But if you make a lot of profit, you pay a lot of tax. But if you want to offset those big profits by giving you tax breaks, well, that's great for the first half of the financial year when you've been making money. But for the second half of the financial year that we're in at the moment, you're not making any money. So those tax breaks only give you so much. This is currently restricted to companies with turnovers of up to $50 million for maximum investment of $30,000. But this will be significantly lifted, allowing companies with turnovers of up to $500 million to make asset write-offs of up to $150,000. So, you know, imagine you're a company, you're making $49 million, uh, but you can't operate. Now, $49 million might sound like a lot, but if you're a, a chain of clubs, $49 million is not enough. And remember, that's turnover. That's not profit. That's turnover. And they say, well, we'll let you write off $30,000. $30,000 is like um, a few fridges in your kitchen. And so you're trying to run a series of clubs, and you're right now able to write off a few... Uh, Fridges. Well, how is that going to help you employ a lot of people? Particularly when the government has just said, by law, you have to shut your doors and let no one in. So these are all very much band-aid solutions that in fact will not help the economy at all. They will just look like they're helping people in the long term when in fact they're barely helping them in the short term as businesses are shut down and cannot operate. The stimulus package also includes $1 billion 
to fund a one billion dollar fund to help the tourism sector. Labor has indicated it would help the government pass the legislation it needed to implement the stimulus package, but has flagged out some concerns. Shadow Treasurer Jim Chalmers said that he feared the new start measures might not be enough to keep casual workers at home while sick. We don't want Australians to have to choose between doing the right thing by their co-workers or going to work so they can afford to live and eat, he said. So we want to make sure that what has been announced today is sufficient. And finally, to go into the budget surplus, the CV has wiped out the budget surplus. Um, and ahead of the federal election, the government championed a forecast budget surplus of $7.1 billion for this financial year. That forecast was revised down to $5 billion in December. The finance minister has now confirmed that there's obviously not going to be a surplus in the year 1920. In the last year, Mr Morrison had repeatedly refused to concede his budget surplus was a forecast and yet to be delivered, having regularly insisted that the budget was back in black. He now says the full extent of the deficit will be revealed in May's budget. The way we've designed the stimulus is to ensure that it doesn't have a fiscal hangover down the track, that it doesn't bury a, the budget for a decade. So you can see the conundrum they're in. They say if we spend too much money now, it's going to hurt us a lot in the future. But if they don't spend it now, there will be no future. So we are in a, a time like no other. This is the GFC times 100. I'm just pulling that number out of the air. Maybe it's a GFC times 1,000, maybe times a million. But the difference is, in the GFC, there was no infection. Borders were not closed during the GFC. Shops were not shut down by law during the GFC. People weren't told to stay indoors during the GFC. We now have all the economic effects of the GFC, but people are locked down. Borders are shut. State borders are shut. And the buildings that you used to be able to go in and shop in are now being shut as well. So this is bigger than beating her. And let's take a look at the markets to see what's happening and how this is reflecting in the markets over the last, we'll look at the last 30 days so we can see, well, first of all, in the gold market. So I'm now looking at the gold markets to see how it looked over the last month. In the last month, gold, this is in uh, US dollars. In the last month, gold came in around the, I'll just set this up. Uh, I lost my little stylus, so I'm uh, playing with my a little tablet here with a, a big finger. I, <laughs> I can't go out and buy a, a stylus for where I am because um, I don't have access to shops anymore. So currently uh, the US dollar, well, sorry, at the beginning of the month, around the beginning of the month, uh, sorry, which was about 23rd of February, so last month, the beginning of the cycle that we're looking at, that being over the last 30 days. At the end of February, we had an ounce of gold selling for $1,674 and it is currently sitting at 1498 So gold has dropped effectively, depending which market you're looking at, and I note to one of my viewers, he spoke about different markets having different prices in gold. Yes, but I'm looking at the US market, which is the biggest, and gold has dropped from 1674 to 1498 in the last 30 days. And of course, the markets are asleep at the moment because it's the weekend, but those numbers don't appear to be getting any better. Looking at the silver markets, uh, it peaked at the beginning of the month, and, and what I mean by that, of course, was at the beginning of the 30-day cycle, which was around the 22nd of February, uh, around the $18.5 mark, so $18.50 for one ounce of gold, and it is now $12. That's a big drop. So silver has gone from $19.00, to $12. And it's lost at $7 uh, off its 20. So at nearly a third or about a third of its price has been wiped off silver in the last 30 days. These markets are taking a big hit. If we take a look at the platinum markets, platinum came in at just under the $1,000 mark and is now at the $600 mark. That's a, a good 38% uh, off the price of platinum. That's a big hit as well. Let's check out the crypto markets, see how they're going over the last 30 days so we can remain consistent. Uh, crypto did take a big hit. Uh, we'll look at crypto over the last 30 days. Uh, it dropped 37% in the last 30 days. But looking at crypto in the last seven days, um, noting my bias for the crypto markets, uh, crypto has recovered 14% in a week. 
Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin here, currently sitting at 6,060 US dollars, climbing nicely, uh, quite stable over the last 24 hours. But this is Sunday in most of the world at the moment. So in the last 24 hours, we typically wouldn't expect to see too much movement in many of the traditional markets. And from the cycles we've seen in crypto land, weekends normally get a little bit quieter. As uh, we'll see tomorrow, uh, I'm predicting big movements in these markets, all markets, not just crypto, but gold, silver. Uh, my prediction is that the traditional markets will take a bigger hit, whilst the crypto markets will continue to gain more strength and rally as people start to realize the hopelessness of the fiat system as uh, global economies collapse everywhere and quantitative easing and traditional methods are poured into these, are used against these economies. And, and when I say against these economies, they are against it because they're trying to do the right thing, but we're in this hopeless situation. It's like one of those movies where they, you have this big, um, uh, think of that movie, what was it called? The Fifth Element, where there was that big evil I don't know, it was like a sun type of thing, and they kept trying to shoot the sun with nuclear missiles or this big evil energy with nuclear missiles. And the more uh, weapons they threw at this thing, the, the bigger and the stronger it got. And that's been a movie theme for many movies where the, the more you attack this thing, even the Hulk, you think the more that you shoot at the Hulk, the bigger and the stronger and angrier he gets. Well, it's the same with economies. Uh, the more quantitative easing and traditional methods you throw at a collapsing economy, the worse the situation gets. So as these traditional methods of quantitative easing are poured into these economies, we are facing a dire situation, which is why people will move out, move out of fiat and traditional markets and get into crypto. Just my opinion, but something I've based this entire channel on. And the whole reason why I'm on YouTube is for years I have been saying this for a long time, fiat will collapse. This is the beginning of that collapse. And there will be something that will rise from the ashes. And in my opinion, it will be cryptocurrency. I think gold and silver has a place, but most certainly we can see that as gold and silver collapses and continues to go down, I shouldn't say collapse, but certainly drops, uh, we can see crypto is not experiencing those same hits. So most certainly when it, the CV went um, pandemic, definitely all markets took a hit, but now we can see this shift where uh, crypto is climbing back up and other markets are not. Uh, just to close off, I want to um, unfortunately give you some more bad news, but we, we always try and keep it real on this channel. So unrecognisable export, experts warn of historic collapse in economic activity. As the coronavirus continues to spread, there is no question the US economy is taking a major hit. Economists at Gold, Goldman, Goldman Sachs sorry, warn GDP will collapse at a 24% rate, a far cry from the 4, 5 and even 6% growth scenario presented by Trump over, the last, over two years ago. So let's put that in perspective. We expected the economy to grow up to 6%, but it's actually gonna pull back by 24%. That's a significant drop. We are in a global recession. Allianz's Mohammed El Arain said on Yahoo Finance's On The Move. We're in a global recession because of what economic sudden stops do. Economic contradictions often happen gradually, not suddenly giving policymakers and business leaders some time to adjust so that growth may resume. The CV pandemic, however, has forced economic activity to grind to a halt. That is a sudden stop, as social distancing has effectively shut down the massive global discretionary services industry while also disrupting the massive global manufacturing goods supply chain. So as these economies are ground to a sudden halt, it's going to be like something we've never seen before. Again, comparative to the GFC, GFC, you could still travel and you could still trade and you could still go and talk to one another and sit next to each other and even pray together. Well, all of that is banned now. All of that is banned as we are trying to not just fight an economic collapse, but a medical pandemic. And when these two worlds are colliding horrifically, we're going to see a downturn like we've never seen in the history I would argue, of, of all modern economics. I've been looking through many cases, even the, the Spanish flu, the Black Plague, the Great Recession, the GFC, and none of them have the, have the, none of them compare. With the Spanish flu, you didn't have this effect across a global economy because everything was much slower then and you couldn't be on a plane and be on the other side of the world in 24 hours. But with this disease, that can and has happened. And I was looking at a chart recently 
where you could see where all the flight paths, instead of calling it the Chinese flu, it could have been called the aviation flu. And the reason is, is because you could see when you mapped it out how clearly this infection had been traveling through airlines from one port to another port, one destination to another destination, certainly via seaports. We've seen that with uh, ships being affected. Uh, but of course, planes are the way we travel. Planes can get us anywhere in the world within a couple of days, typically within 24 hours, taking away the planning on, and road travel on either side. But most places in the world, you can get there in a day, throw two days at it for the difficult uh, places. And noting that this disease, this flu, uh, can lie dormant for up to 14 days and we can't even see where it exists. Uh, this thing is like nothing that the world has ever seen, has hopefully will never witness again. And even if we do make a vaccine, it will take some time to test that vaccine and put that vaccine out there. What does it all mean? It means, as I've been saying before, you've got to get back to the basics. Make sure you keep fit and healthy. Make sure you talk to those that you can talk to via here, technology, that being the way that we can keep our social distancing. Make sure also that you stockpile as much um, goods within reason. And what I mean by that is don't get into a situation where you're fighting in the supermarket over flour and rice. Think about your neighbor. Uh, the only way we're gonna survive is in communities. It's the only way we've survived uh, throughout history. If you try and go this alone, it's gonna be very difficult to do. Build up your alliances, build up your supplies, build up your health, remain calm, keep talking to one another, believe that we'll get through this, we are gonna get through this, and we'll be talking about this with our grandkids for years to come, and most certainly, uh, hopefully, we're all gonna reanalyze the way we look at the world, not just health and um, love and family, but also the economic setup of everything that is money. Leave your comments below, hope you're doing well, give us a like and subscribe so I can continue uh, knowing that I'm doing some uh, good out here and hopefully giving you some information, putting perspective on what is happening in the space of economics during this pandemic. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you next time.